Amen. Amen. Many of our fears are materialized through the agony and the pain of this shooting in Orlando just yesterday. How can we who mourn and feel the pain of the violence and hate listen to this first reading and be able to feel any kind of consolation, being told that everything will be better without any roadmap or plan to show us how things will be better. What is the kingdom of God as a form of living if death is all around us? If we cannot even fathom our own lives as more than futile and short. You see, in case it hasn't been clear enough, I do have a real problem with the theology that goes beyond today's first reading. Why wouldn't flesh and blood be able to inherit the kingdom? Why would a kingdom of life, as we want to affirm that we are trying to live, be in any way, shape, or form not for the perishable? You see, the wonderful mystery that we get out of this reading seems to point to a promise, but ends leading me into a disappointment. Because we want to affirm that things that we do matter, that the way we live matter, and the lives we say matter. In a world so in need of forgiveness, <coughs> reconciliation, and peace, the way forward has to be more than a simple desire and plain hope. Once I heard it said that the language of hope is one of great danger and power. And allow me to illustrate this. Should we say today to those who mourn the death of their loved ones that they are in a better place? That we need to hope that everything will be well? Or should we, as Obama suggested in his statement yesterday, choose to actively do nothing and simply hope for the best? The suggestion here is that the failure and despair and also the values of the kingdom of God, just as I suggested, the problems I have to today's first reading, I also find that it serves as a form of warning us as Christians, in many ways, hoping that everything will suddenly change is not an option. While hope can be used to empower in many ways, it can also be used for a call to inaction <coughs> and acceptance of the status quo. LGBTQ, equality, racial justice, and economic justice just to name a few, are examples where action does way better than just hope. While I was participating in the last October in the Parliament of the World Religions, I attended this, this workshop where we were offered the theology of Jode, that is a perfect theological dynamic, where it reflects that there's no longer hope, where despair is our day-to-day -day reality, and grief and violence have become so ingrained in our society that being a screw is part of our modus operandi. That is a reality that hits us right in the face. The LGBTQ community, the poor and the oppressed in this world, are confronted not only with this terrible act of violence and hate, but to the struggles of simple things such as the new bathroom wars. That no matter what we do, it is not completely up to us to change the world, but what to us should we not give our lives trying? You see, my little Christological offering here, where this whole rant about hope is, if you want to call it that, derives from this, that when we 
we, those same disciples that are mentioned in today's gospel, when they abandoned Jesus, when Jesus himself was crucified and buried, the whole kingdom of God as Jesus lived it and ministered to it, failed. And there was no hope in the despair felt by Jesus in his crucifixion, a completely and fully embracement of his humanity required that no other sense of something better and unexpected would happen to him. Perhaps it was the same feeling of those trapped in club post Sunday morning, where hope was completely lost. And perhaps the worst kind of hope was lost, that our own humanity was capable of elevating itself beyond hate and violence. But as the Dutch theologian Edward Schelbeck would suggest, that is exactly where God is in this entire horrific scene, scene of death and despair. The nothing of it is God. That our sense of what is missing is in this theology of Holer. That our sense of what was missing was Jesus. When Jesus was crucified, our sense of what was missing, also in these martyrs of Cliff Paul's, was exactly God. That we are able to identify where God is missing, but because we can tell where God is not. Let's left alone as much as we know, as much as we had seen, Humanity will continue to struggle with racial, sexual, and economic inequalities. But our goal and energies should be spent in making it happen as much as we can. Because none of those inequalities are God's. God shows us totally the opposite. God refuses to allow evil have the last word in this world. And that is the part that makes the kingdom of God so compelling. It's that constant possibility of making, making it an earthly reality. And as much as it goes beyond our individual actions, it can only continue to advance by our constant actions and self-giving to that same kingdom. May the struggles we face, our own failures, and the constant setbacks serve us as a reminder that we follow the same Jesus who died on the cross for this kingdom.